Hi there and welcome. I am Giuseppe Corcella from Virtual Orchestration and today I'm going to review the Deep Quintet Strings by 8DO. First of all, I want to thank 8DO for kindly sending us a copy of the library to review. Deep Quintet Strings is a library for contact including two violins, one viola and two cellos. It requires the full version of contact 5.8.1 or above, therefore it doesn't run in the free contact player and you can install it via the 8DO downloader. Compressed size is 15.29 GB and it's available for $150. On the website you can find a lot of uh, more information about the library itself and an official walkthrough about it. The peculiarity of this library is that uh, this was sampled with 9 round robin for legato. So every time uh, you play a legato transition you are supposed to trigger a different sample until the cycle restarts. And this lets you not to have a kind of machine gun effect or a kind of monotony when playing especially fast passages because each transition should be different from the previous one, like you should have indeed in a real environment, in a real performance. Deep quintet strings comes with one main NKI instrument and some subfolders including the individual patches for the articulations. By the way, in the main NKI instrument you basically have the entire quintet and you can decide to solo mute the instrument and uh, move other parameters uh, we will uh, see in a while. An important thing to notice uh, is that uh, this quintet is uh, made of uh, twin violins, solo viola and uh, twins uh, cellos. And this is important to notice in my opinion because you cannot uh, split the violins and the uh, cellos. So starting from this patch uh, you can enable or disable uh, one or more of the instruments. If you click on this button you can enable or disable the instruments. You can also solo or mute them. Each one has individual volume here, individual pan here and you can decide the position of the instrument from the mic. So with this setting I have the violin closer to the mic and if I turn this up, uh, I have the violin uh, far from the mic. In the lower region, uh, we have also some uh, parameters. Uh, we have the dynamics, uh, which controls, uh, of course, the velocity crossfade between the velocity layers. Uh, expression, uh, which is basically an additional volume. And uh, if you enable uh, this uh, button you can move dynamics and expression at the same time. We have here the legato speed, release, response and you can also decide the vibrato amount. As you change the articulation you will see that some of them will be grey and some of them will be black. This depends on which parameters work on this or that articulation. And you can also add a bit of noise. You see here that I have a bit of, uh, let's say, analog noise if I turn this up. And if I disable this button, I don't have any background noise. Here we have a second page, the effects page, which features the most common ADOs rack and we have here filter, EQ, delay, transform with a lot of uh, presets and parameters you can uh, choose here and uh, reverb with uh, quite a few ambiences so you can also uh, shape a bit uh, the sound uh, directly inside the contact instance if you click on that uh, you will see this, the articulations slot which are empty when you first open the library and if you double click on that 
another window appears. Uh, we have basically here uh, two kind of uh, articulations, traditional and arcs, and uh, you can just uh, click on one of these and uh, it will load into the RAM. By clicking on this, uh, you can switch between key switch and uh, control change to change the articulation. One limitation I personally find in this is that you just have a limited number of slots. You can like it or not, this is totally up to you. For my kind of workflow, I usually prefer to have the possibility to assign to key switches all the articulations the library can offer to me, to use the expression maps of Cubase to switch between one articulation and the other one. But of course, this is totally up to you. One thing I usually do using this library is just to assign the main articulations to the key switches, but also you can then just create another instance and assign to another MIDI channel. So have anyway anything in your expression maps or articulation set or also by using the individual patches you can just assign them to other MIDI channels and use anyways the expression maps to switch between them. And then uh, you can also change the volume of each articulation and this is quite uh, useful in my opinion. So you can uh, use this library both as uh, an ensemble with all together but also uh, you can uh, disable the one or more instruments uh, and use it uh, just on uh, individual uh, tracks. So now let's just see how this uh, sound with all together and just one sustain articulation. Let's uh, now disable uh, the viola and the cello and uh, let's hear just the violin. Okay, let's move uh, the instruments uh, far from the mic. You can hear that uh, the sound is less detailed when you move it far from the mic, but uh, you gain uh, a lot of more uh, details in the sound itself when it's uh, close to the mic. The sound is very dry and this is something I really like because I always use a convolution reverb in the mixing process. So to have dry samples, uh, it really helps me with this uh, because I can choose whichever uh, convolution reverb I want uh, with no risk to add uh, more ambience to another uh, real ambience. So you have here five kinds of uh, sustain. You have a sustain, uh, sustain poco vibrato, Molto vibrato and variable and sustain natural. The sustain variable, as you can see, it triggers also the vibrato parameter, meaning that you can choose the amount of vibrato here, while here you have poco vibrato and molto vibrato, and this is natural sustain. Okay, so the sustain is basically a non vibrato patch and uh, the sustain natural uh, seems to start with a non vibrato but then uh, 
automatically go to a natural uh, vibrato. Let's just uh, uh, try a bit of this, the poco vibrato and the molto vibrato. And uh, let's add a bit of a reverb here. You can clearly hear that uh, on these two articulations uh, you get the vibrato as soon as the sample starts, uh, while on the natural sustain uh, the vibrato come in uh, a bit later, so the note basically starts uh, with uh, a non vibrato, a very low vibrato. Let's try now the variable one. Okay, so uh, it uh, seems in a way to have uh, a vibrato also at the lowest point, uh, but it's a very smooth uh, vibrato and uh, you can uh, really hear a lot of vibrato when uh, the knob is uh, on its uh, higher point. Okay, let's try now the legato, which is uh, supposed to be the core of this uh, library, and uh, you can also see how heavy this articulation is on the rem which should be an indication of how deeply was sampled
Okay, yeah, I, I think it's uh, a quite uh, versatile uh, library because you can use it uh, both uh, for uh, lush uh, and uh, sorry melodies, but also for uh, very fast uh, passages. And uh, I honestly think this legato works uh, very fine. Uh, also, the uh, dynamics are uh, very fine, in my opinion. You can uh, really hear from uh, the bottom of the dynamic range to the highest dynamics and actually hear a difference uh, both in terms of uh, intensity and uh, timbre. Let's go now with the arcs, glance, poco vibrato. Both glances and shorts are uh, velocity sensitive, uh, so in order to change the dynamics uh, you have to change the pressor of your finger to the keyboard. Consider then that uh, uh, as arcs uh, you have uh, a bit of uh, change in the, uh, in the sample itself of the uh, dynamic. Uh, not a great uh, one but you have a bit of a crescendo at the beginning uh, and uh, to the top uh, which is uh, in the middle and then a bit of diminuendo. In the end uh, they are shorter samples uh, and uh, of different uh, length. Uh, and let's try the trailing uh, vibrato So yeah, they have a bit of a crescendo inside them, but uh, you decide uh, the intensity of uh, the note by with, with the velocity. So if you want a softer note, you have to press uh, very soft. Uh, and uh, if, you if you want, uh, a, let's say, a, fort, a fortissimo kind of dynamic, uh, 
you will press uh, stronger but indeed they are shorter samples uh, with uh, a bit of uh, crescendo and uh, in some cases uh, uh, diminuendo in the ending inside the sample itself okay let's go now with the viola as you can see as i enable or disable the instruments uh, the samples uh, are uh, loaded and uh, unloaded from the rem
very beautiful. You can cover a wider range of uh, expressivity, in my opinion. So let's go now to the last instrument, the cellos. And uh, as like the other two, let's just uh, play around with the articulations this library can offer. Okay, so as you could uh, hear, without a reverb, uh, even if I set the position of the instrument uh, far from the mic, uh, in any case, uh, it doesn't add any uh, strong ambience, so the sample still remains quite uh, dry.
So let's go to the conclusion. Personally, I enjoyed this library. The sound of the strings is quite good in my opinion and also I really like the legato patches and legato transitions. I actually like a lot of the articulation here and uh, uh, I really like the possibility to have uh, different uh, sustain styles. I really appreciate the addition of the sustain variable articulation which uh, gives you the possibility to change the vibrato amount. Talking about the instrumentation, the twins strings stuff, the twins violins and the twins cellos is something that you may or you may not like. I personally prefer in a library to have access to each instrument separately. In any case, they work very well together and they can also work well layered to other libraries. But I believe that the instrumentation, the patches, how they are divided uh, into the library itself uh, is something important to be considered. I really appreciate uh, that uh, you have uh, all uh, separate controls here and you can uh, enable disable the instrument uh, all uh, in the same uh, place uh, and that you can decide the position of the instrument itself uh, from the mic and uh, it actually helps you to change the color and uh, to uh, achieve a different kind of sound if you need. Also the samples are very dry and this is something uh, very important in my opinion, uh, especially if you want to add uh, a convolution reverb uh, later on so uh, you don't have any issue with overlapping uh, other ambiences and stuff like that. Another thing uh, to be considered is that uh, this library is more focused on uh, long articulations. You have some uh, shorter articulations here, but they are arcs, uh, so they are not uh, meant to be short articulation uh, in that term. They, you have not staccato, staccatissimo, pizzicato, you have not tremolo. So uh, this is a library which is focused on that kind of uh, articulations, uh, but I think that uh, it does uh, a very good job with these articulations so it's fine the legato is great in my opinion the sound is very good the samples are dry so yeah the, these are all important things to keep in mind when you decide uh, to approach a library like this uh, in my opinion in any case i think this quintet can serve a lot of genres not only classical but also other kind of stuff the legato is very versatile uh, you can uh, go from uh, 
very lush uh, and uh, soft uh, soaring melodies uh, to more uh, virtuosistic passages so it's all for today i hope you enjoyed this video if you want to support uh, virtual orchestration uh, subscribe to the channel join our newsletter if you wish uh, if you enjoyed this video hit the like button uh, click on the bell icon uh, so you will be notified as soon as uh, we release a new tutorial or a new review. I wish you a good day and see you on the next review.